Hello friends, welcome back to another video of automation testing .com. So In the last video we talked about waterfall model and we have seen there are some drawbacks in waterfall model like if requirements are changing frequently they can then we cannot go for waterfall model and if project is big or complex then we should not go for waterfall model and another thing is until unless if our first phase is not, ad not done then we cannot jump to the next phase and also we cannot come back from the uh, next phase to the first phase so these these, these are the uh, main drawbacks of waterfall model so to overcome to overcome all these uh, drawbacks here we comes for here we uh, go for uh, iterative model okay so what is iterative model the name says iterative so it works on the basis of iteration iteration is nothing but uh, when we do something again and again when we perform some task again and again it's called iteration so let me explain like what do you mean by iterative model so take an example we have some requirements from the customer let's say we have xyz requirements from the customer now the first step in iterative model is we should prioritize our requirements so take an example in this case I'll first go for the requirement X okay and then will follow the complete SDLC process like requirement analysis design coding testing and release and maintenance so I'll, I have picked one requirement at a time like X and then we follow the waterfall like what are the different SDLC phases we have requirement analysis design coding testing and release and maintenance release okay so we'll follow all those steps and we'll deliver the first build of software working software so this is first iteration now after getting the feedback from the customer uh, getting the feedback and reviews from the customer will work for the requirement Y now again we will perform the same task like requirement analysis design coding testing and release so this is iteration 2 similarly for uh, the third requirement that is y, uh, z x y z so the z the last one is z so we'll work for the uh, same pro, uh, we'll follow the same process for requirement z so we'll follow the same procedure again and again till we get gets the final build so this is how iteration works okay this is called the iterative model so let me take you to my PPT where we'll discuss like some, some of the theoretical stuff of iterative model and also discuss about pros and cons of iterative model and I'll show you, I'll explain you better with the help of diagram there. So let me take you to my PPT. So guys, let me just recap what we have discussed at the beginning of this video, some theoretical stuff so you can make a note of it, like what you mean by iterative model, how it works. So we create rough product or product piece in one iteration then review it and improve it in the next iteration and so on until it's finished. So we work on the basis of uh, like it's, it, it works on the basis of module like module wise and then we'll get some reviews from the customer. So we'll work like module 1, module 1, 2, 3 and so on till we get the final build. And in the next slide, I'll show you with the help of example, whatever we have discussed at the beginning of this video. So the basic idea behind this method is to overlap or develop a system through repeated cycle. Iterative. Iterative. And it is, and in a smaller portion at a time, incremental. So this is also called incremental model. Okay, so this is the combination uh, of iterative plus incremental. Why it is called incremental? Because uh, it increments the requirements like module 1, module 2, we got some other requirements and then module 3. So we and incrementally adding all those requirements, those modules. So that's why it is called incremental module as well. Now let me explain with the help of an example. So suppose we got some requirements from the customer. Take an example, this is requirement x1 y1 z1 x2 
y2 z2 and x3 y3 z3 so these are the requirements we got from the customer requirement from the customer now we'll follow the sdlc process the complete sdlc process to build the software so in the uh, previous slide we have seen like we have to deliver the first working piece of software we'll follow the complete life cycle like requirement analysis then design design then coding plus testing and then release and maintenance and at last we we get the feedback feedback and reviews from the customer for this build so this is complete one process guys and this is called build one build one so do not worry about the build and release i'll create a separate video what do you mean by build and release so we followed the first uh, module will uh, and this is consider consider this is module one okay consider this is module module one this set of requirements under module one now we followed the complete steps so this is called at iteration one iteration one now we got some feedback from the customer and reviews and will work uh, based on those reviews and uh, feedback will work on module two we'll keep uh, we add those feedback and reviews in module two okay suppose they want to make some changes in module one so we'll make the correction and we'll integrate with module two now we develop module two along with module one now we'll follow the same procedure again and again like requirement analysis design coding testing and release so this is iteration two now again we'll get feedback from the customer reviews from the customer okay now we'll develop module three so we'll keep adding module one two three and so on till we get our final build final product so this is uh, how it works the iterative model it is called uh, incremental why because we are, we keep adding module one module one plus module two plus module three and so on that's why it is incremental and iterative because this is we follow the same procedure again again and again okay so this is one sdlc process iteration one this is again we followed the uh, sdlc phase iteration two and this is iteration t so this is about iterative model and another thing is like module 2 can start parallelly as well suppose we have already working on module 1 now we can start start module 2 as well at the same time maybe after it is it reached over here coding phase then we can start parallelly module 2 as well from requirement analysis so it can run parallelly as well and it works uh, for the uh, project which uh, which has multiple modules like in this case we have uh, we have divided into three different modules so this is how it works guys iterative model now let's uh, talk about some advantages and disadvantages of iterative model so testing and debugging during smaller iteration is easy we have divided into different uh, modules so debugging is easy in this case it is easily acceptable to ever changing needs of the project so in this is the biggest drawback in uh, in waterfall model like we cannot change the requirements we cannot come back and change the requirement but here we can accept the requirements limited time is spent on documentation and extra time on designing so this is an important point so we have uh, we spent less time on documentation and extra time on designing 
risks are identified and resolved during iteration so whatever risk we'll get we'll talk about risk in the next uh, model that is spiral model more about some more uh, points about the risks However, i'll create a separate video on risk because it's a uh, because we have a complete tutorial on risk as well because that is separate uh, part so risks are identified and resolved during each iteration so what are the different disadvantages of spiral model so it is not suitable for smaller projects so since we have divided uh, into different modules and uh, we work on the basis of uh, like uh, sdlc and we followed uh, module wise concept so if cost will be increased if we follow this for smaller projects okay so maybe it, it will not applicable for small projects design can be changed again and again because of imperfect requirements so if you don't get the correct requirements then design can be changed again and again so this will cost uh, this will uh, double the budget of the project requirement changes can cause over budget are uh, the same thing and then project completion date not confirmed because of changing requirements so yeah completion date is not confirmed because of the changing requirements so these are the drawbacks of a uh, spiral model sorry iterative model so in the next video guys uh, i'm going to talk about spiral model so thank you guys thanks Thank you so much and please like share and comment if you have any questions and subscribe this channel and click the bell icon to get the notification for upcoming videos thank you so much have a nice day bye bye